Van Tianyu, the Dean of the Natural Sciences and the Department of Chemical Engineering. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to the first part of the final examination for the PhD degree, PhD degree of Jamal Das. Uh, this will be the trial lecture, and as you can see, the trial lecture is entitled Model Free versus Model Based Control. Will machine learning take over? So this is very exciting. Uh, just a few quick words about Tamal and the committee, and I'll to say more in the afternoon. Uh, Tamal is from Jabalpur in India, and he did his master's degree at the Otto von uh, Gericke University in Magdeburg, Germany. And he was awarded a grant to do a PhD in a subpro project. Uh, uh, which he started in 2015. So now we're here. He has submitted his thesis and is ready to defend it. Uh, the supervisor of the thesis was uh, Professor Johannes Jaske, and he were co-supervised by Sigurd Spugestad. Today we're very uh, happy to have our, as our uh, examination committee uh, Professor uh, Zen Yu Yang from Aalborg University in Denmark and Dr. Richard Arnsen from Shell in here in Norway. So with that, I'd like to give the floor to Tamal for what seems to be a very interesting topic for a trial lecture. Good luck, Tamal. Uh, thank you very much, Brian. Uh, this is my trial lecture and the topic has been told, model-free versus model-based control. Uh, will machine learning take over? I'm sure machine learning is uh, starting to show up as a very important uh, tool and very rightly so as I found through my uh, through my analysis. So machine learning. Uh, machines learning to control things? That's not new. Uh, we have a C3PO, a very our own, uh, and this feat has uh, happened a long time ago in a galaxy far far away. <laughs> It's uh, just only in this galaxy that we are lagging behind and particularly on Earth that we are just re recently starting to see the effect of machine learning. So what has it achieved? Recent uh, achievements? Well, will machine learning take over? Well, it is showing some signs. Machine learning based DeepMind AlphaGo. DeepMind is a company based out of the United Kingdom. And uh, they have developed a computer player to play a very difficult game called Go and they have named it AlphaGo, which in 2016 uh, managed to beat some very good players of this game. And this it did by just being able to learn the game by itself through something called reinforcement learning. So there is some potential. Uh, very rec recently after this uh, event, uh, Google hired or bought this company, DeepMind, and uh, after that, they figured out through their machine learning algorithms that they can save up to 15% of their electricity usage in the data centers, which is quite a significant amount because Google, you know, eats, sleeps in data. So to uh, discuss uh, this topic, I have uh, a content, and the content has process control because that's my background. I would uh, start with uh, framing a base for this. Then I will uh, move a little bit into machine learning control and talk about what is machine learning, what is reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning, by the way, is uh, the topic that is of interest to control engineers. Uh, Model-free control, which is one part of this uh, discussion, model-based control. And then I will try to address the two main questions, which is the comparison of model-free versus model-based control. And will machine learning take over? So, I stole some slides from uh, our professor Sigurd Skogestad uh, and he has a nice way of saying things and there's uh, possibly no better ways. Uh, so he, uh, he has uh, uh, made this hierarchical decomposition of the process control where we have decisions made at uh, weekly level, decisions made at daily level, decisions made at hourly level, seconds level, minutes level. And the most interesting is these top three where we have some optimization going on, like real-time optimization, making bigger decisions on economics and stuff. 
Then we have model predictive control, which is uh, in the supervisory control layer, where we make some more closer dynamic uh, decisions uh, on dynamic uh, control variables, dynamic inputs, and then at the very low, we always have PM, PID uh, control, which is the regulatory control. A very simple way to, uh, to present that is this bicycle riding example, also stolen from Sigurd. Excellent example. The lowest level regulatory control is like being able to manage the stability of the bike by tilting yourself a little bit and moving the body position so that the bike is stabilized. Once you have achieved that, then you are good to go and ride the bike a little bit further. And when you ride, you have to make sure that you don't waver off in, on, the, on the street. So you make a half a meter distance from the edge and that is your second goal and that's kind of a decision at a higher level and this is uh, supervisory control. So this is, the bottom, uh, this is the bottom most and then you have uh, the next level, the PID is that you can see the color matching and you have, this is kind of the MPC and then you have a bigger decision. Then you want to ride from NTNU to uh, need the Rose Domain and then you need uh, which route to take and Google then optimizes based on whatever is your criteria to take which route. So this is a basic framework, but one thing that is very common in all these things is a structure. So process control does have a structure where we have a system dynamics, this is the interaction with the real uh, reality, where we have some disturbances going on, we have some actions or actuation or control input as you want to call it uh, here, these are the decisions we make to influence uh, certain objectives, which are here. And then we analyze how we did through the sensor data. And this sensor data is the base to work, uh, work your control action inside the controller. So this is the basic structure that uh, I am deriving it from process control, but it's very much valid also in other domains. So, now to talk a little bit about model-free control and model-based control. Well, model-free control is, um, is, is not very well defined. So, here for this presentation, I'm trying to set out some ground, ground rules, what we call model-free and what we call model-based control. So, here you can see the controller part. Here is something called only the control law. We don't have any model in here. So, that goes into the model-free bucket. If you have a model running simultaneously, then we will call it model-based control. So you can already associate it with model predictive control and here something like uh, PID control. So one question that bothered me, where does the machine learning control fit in this bigger picture? Does it go into the model-free control or does it go into the model-based control? So I did a little bit of analysis and found out that, well, there are three things, the control law, the model and the combination of model and the control law. And the control law itself could be machine learned. There's something called genetic programming. It's very interesting that you can have a structure of a controller and the structure of the controller could also optimize itself as well as the parameters therein, like for example, a PID. So that kind of approach is uh, within machine learning. One of the examples is genetic programming. So that could be machine learned. Then the model itself could be machine learned, like a data-driven model of any type. It doesn't have to be specifically artificial neural network. It could be PLS or any, any data-driven approach. And then we have model plus control together being machine learned, which is something like reinforcement learning. So machine learning control can be both model-free as well as model-based, just so that it's it. Uh, so the only difference that I see is that machine learning is a topic that comes from a different background. It has uh, roots in computer science, artificial intelligence. It's not a typical control domain. But over the years, uh, we have started to see that there is some synergy between control and machine learning based control. So, however, they have a slightly different terminology uh, to deal with the same problem. They do call the disturbance the disturbance. That's the only similar thing. Apart from that, they call the actuation or control inputs as actions. The control law could be called policy, which depends on the sensor data, which is kind of the state. And they call the objective as value function. And value could be positive, then it is a reward. And if it is negative, then it's a, then it's a punishment. 
Now, machine learning, uh, learning control thought experiment, and I, I wondered, if we throw a robot like this, and don't tell it that it's a robot, and throw it in moon, and ask it to walk, which is uh, the value function, that we want it to stabilize its walking, will it be able to do that? The way machine learning works is it tries to interact with the environment, and tries to interact with itself to figure out whether it's a drone, or whether it's a robot, and then it figures out whether it's on Earth or it's on Moon. There is a bit of trial and error at the start. It will fall down multiple times before figuring out that it is possible. Uh, and so it will succeed, perhaps. But uh, there is a bit of trial and error necessary. And at the same time, we then must have some headspace for testing these ideas. So some testing is required before controller deployment and it's uh, irrespective of whether the, the controller is a machine learning controller or it's a regular controller. We always need some testing. <coughs> I will address this topic a little bit later, but let's talk a bit about machine learning itself. Machine learning has its uh, background in uh, computer science, deep-rooted background in computer science, uh, where we are talking about games. So the origin of machine learning, as you can read here, uh, a computer can be programmed so that it, can, it will learn to play a better game of checkers that can be played by the person who wrote the program. And we don't see much of a difference in the main uh, roots because as I showed in the AlphaGo game, or the Go game itself, that we had the same thing that a computer player was designed which is playing even better than that, better than humans. And here we see that the first program with learning was completed in 1955 and demonstrated on television on February 1956. So uh, machine learning has been there since 1950s or perhaps even before, but uh, it's only during the 1950s it was very much uh, prominent through the computer games. But what is machine learning? Well, I picked up this uh, very simple definition and it says Machine learning is training of a model from data that generalizes a decision against a performance measure. Very much in the control domain. This is what we do. We have an objective which we want to achieve. We have some control actions and we do that. So this is uh, pretty much a control definition or control technology definition. But uh, as I already told, well, machine learning has its roots in something else other than what we call traditional control. It has its roots in artificial intelligence, so clearly from computer science domain. And within that artificial intelligence, we have the subfield of machine learning. So it's just a subfield of artificial intelligence. There are many other things going on inside artificial intelligence. And very recently, we have started to see the evolution of machine learning within the field called deep learning. And this is kind of very recent development in the last five to ten years that we are starting to really unleash uh, or really unlock the value of machine learning through the development in deep learning. <coughs> but what is really machine learning? What does it do? It extracts information from data. Data has the power. Data knows everything and doesn't matter how much we want to philosophize around it, it's always data that governs. So it's true that we need to uh, unlock uh, the potential that data has and to do that is to extract information from data, the relevant information, how to control certain things, how to influence our decisions based on that. And deep learning is the tool to do this data, mach data mining. The way it, uh, it deals is, it deals with a neural network with more than two layers then this again is a limited definition because I'm talking about precisely neural networks because it is also applicable to other things. But the nice thing is that the math behind this is linear algebra and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So this is a typical artificial neural network uh, uh, picture and here you have certain inputs here and you have an out some outputs here. These inputs combine in specific weights like this, so it's a weighted average, 